So now that we have Logstash installed and configured, all we have to do is run it, and that's pretty easy to do. All we need to do is cd into the directory where Logstash is installed, and on Ubuntu, that's under user slash share slash Logstash. And from there, we can just run Logstash under the bin folder with a single argument, dash f, that specifies the path to the configuration file that we just created. And this way you can run Logstash with different configuration files. And that might be for different things you want to do with different combinations of input and output plugins. So let's just dive in and do it. So let's go ahead and run it and see what happens. Like we said, first we have to cd into where Logstash is installed. cd slash user slash share slash Logstash. If you want to look at what's in there, you can. There's the bin folder that contains all the actual executables that we need to run. So that's where Logstash itself lives. Let's go ahead and run it. So sudo bin slash Logstash. And we just need to pass in the path to the configuration file with dash f. And for us, that will be etc logstash conf.d logstash.conf. And that's the configuration file that we just wrote to monitor the access log file that we put into our home directory and send it into Elasticsearch and standard output. So let's kick that off. It will take a minute or two for that to spin up the first time, so uh, I'm just gonna pause and come back when that's done. Okay, we're starting to get some output here, and you can ignore these warnings and info messages. They're typically um, harmless. What we're watching for, however, are error messages because that might indicate an error in your configuration file. So if you do see errors at this point, be a good idea to go back and double check the uh, for any typos in that logstash.conf file that we created in the previous lecture. But so far, so good. Um, it will take another minute or so to uh, really start processing that data. So again, I'm going to pause and come back once that gets going into high gear. Well, actually, it's going right now. So we're starting to see more and more progress as it parses that configuration file. And it looks like it's going to start doing its thing any second now. So far, so good. There it goes. Cool. All right. So we can see it's actually parsing out all of those log lines in there successfully. This is what you should be seeing, guys. And you can see that it's uh, successfully grokking out that log line format and breaking it up into individual fields here and sending that off into our Elasticsearch server. At the same time, it's dumping it onto standard output so we can actually see it go by in real time as well and visualize its progress. Now there is a lot of data in that log file, so um, we have to wait for it to get through it all, and that does take quite a bit of time. So I am definitely going to pause this vi video right now and come back when that's done processing. Uh, this could take a while, guys, but just be patient. Once it stops scrolling like this, you'll know you're done, and we can come back and continue. All right, so it appears to have stopped. It didn't really take as long as I thought it would, uh, just a minute or so. So now that it's actually completed, apparently, going through that log file, let's hit Control-C to break out a log stash. Otherwise, it would just sit there forever waiting for new data to be appended to that log file. All right, so that shut down successfully. Let's go ahead and see what we got in our Elasticsearch index now. So let's start by getting a list of the indices that we have so far, because we need to figure out what name it actually assigned to that index. We didn't specify one, so Logstash made one up for us. To do that, we can say curl-xget 127.0.0.1 colon 9200 slash underscore cat. We want a catalog, guys, of all the indices. Uh, question mark V for verbose format. And here we have all of the indices that we've created so far in this course, and we see a new one here, logstash 2019050507 dash 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. and that will correspond to whatever date you're actually running this on yourself. So take note of what that is, and now we can actually use that index to query things. So let's go ahead and say curl-xget 127.0.0.1 colon 9200 slash logstash-2019 dash dash whatever it is for you. All right. And we'll just do a general search on the whole index in pretty format and just make sure we have some data. And we do. Cool. So basically the exactly the same thing that it said it was inserting into Elasticsearch while Logstash was running is, in fact, here in the index. So it seems to have worked. Very cool. And you can see the path of the file that it came from there, home student access log, the client IP, the actual message, the timestamp, the response code, all sorts of useful information that we might want to analyze later on 
in uh, troubleshooting problems with this web server potentially. But yay, it worked. So we actually installed Logstash and ran it successfully using a real Apache access log and created a new index in Elasticsearch containing that data that we can analyze later in the course. And we shall. So cool. Let's move on.